Hello everybody, my name is Shretex and welcome back to Victoria 3. Now, like our last episode, I'm going to give out some objectives for this one so you can kind of see what I'm trying to do throughout the game uh, or the video. We're going to be trying to, first off, conquer as much as Central America as humanly possible. So we're going to try and at least get to, get, get to here if we can, best case scenario. Worst case, maybe just Costa Rica, we'll have to see. The second thing I want to try and do is to once again increase the capacity of my construction yard so we can get more buildings built quicker because we want to grow, grow and grow to keep up with the major powers in the game. Anyway, apart from that, let's press step play. So last episode, we actually started creating and actually have funded a military, which currently has, I think, 15,000 fully armed soldiers which are ready to fight for me in glorious battle. Now, there is also Costa Rica, which is the first hurdle in our little uh, campaign here. I'm actually just going to start conquering them right away. So we did go through this last episode where we already have... Yes, I'm sure. A ch we already have a situation where... Mexico is in the war against us already. But as I explained, because America is their rival, they are very interested in joining my war on my side to actually take down some of the Mexican lands. Because at this, this point, Mexico owns a lot of America. <laughs> at least what we know historically anyway. So they probably want to try and reclaim a lot of the territory that they've lost here. Okay, so in a second, perfect. We've reached the next phase. So... Wars and the pl diplomatic plays have three stages. You go through the first one, which literally nothing happens. Well, one second, everybody. You have a second phase, which is the diplomatic phase, where you can call in other nations to assist you if you give them like ver certain buffs. So if we go into America here, we can get them to join us by either... This is a bit weird. Giving them a treaty port in Mexico. They will also accept having an open market or an obligation. Now, I'm not going to lie, everybody. I'm surprised they don't want to just take over their territory. Do they not want Texas? They don't. <laughs> oh, whatever, it's totally fine. Apparently Texas isn't important to America. It's not a problem. So instead, we just promise them that we will open the market of Mexico, which would mean that they have to use free trade laws. For me, it does absolutely nothing. For America, probably nothing as well, but it means that they will join me in this battle. So we go with that. And in a second, we should see it pop through. Or will we? <laughs> anyway, so while we're waiting for that to go through, there you go. America has sided with us in the war to take over Costa Rica. Now, unfortunately, at this point, I don't know what could happen. Ameri like Another country may join our enemy's side. We don't know. We just got to hope that England does not get involved. If they do, we're probably screwed. Um, <laughs> please, England, don't get involved. Actually, if I look at here, are they already at war? Oh, they're in two, they're in a war, and another different, I think we're okay. As long as they're distracted, it shouldn't be a problem. So, next step, we need to try and get ourselves a military general. So, at the start, we actually have no one in charge of our military at all. So, we go to recruit general, and we go to Grand Columbia. This is split, by the way, between strategic regions. So, because all my H uh, barracks are in the same region, we need one general. Okay, so, we have two choices. And they have various traits. Sometimes they suck. <laughs> Which may be this time. Uh, so we have one from the Catholic Church. And one from the Petit Bourgeois. And recruiting them. Will improve the popularity and influence of said faction. Uh, depending on their rank. Now looking at these traits. I think they are both kind of sucky. To be honest everybody. They are not exactly bringing me much. Yeah they, they kind of suck. <laughs> this Yeah. <clears throat> Plan B, everybody. Plan B. We're going to recruit this... Wait, before I do this. Neutral, negative four. Plus two. I'm going to recruit this man. Welcome. Random person. You're fired. <laughs> and by doing that, I've reset it. So I get another choice. Okay, this time we got Francisco Jose. Armed forces. He's pious. What does that do? Uh, morale damage and recovery. That's pretty cool. I don't care if people survive his combat as long as he gets results. He's an explorer, which means he is... Better at certain things. And also good at fighting in mountains, which is pretty handy because this place is pretty mountainous, if you haven't noticed. There's a lot of mountains everywhere. You, Francisco, are going to be our glorious general. Now, because he's rank one, he doesn't take up much um, control points of bureaucracy. And also, he can only control in combat... Where is it? This one. 20 regular battalions and 40 conscript battalions. Now, luckily for us... It's fine. We only have 15, so it's not a problem. If we were to get 30,000 men, though, we probably have to promote him so he can use more units in one battle. Anyway, so he is going to be our main general. Let's mobilize him and we move him to the front lines. 
Now, everybody, do not panic. This is going to be expensive. <laughs> uh, by actually mobilizing a battalion for war, you're going to be using, I think, double the resources. So I'm stuck on my headphone jack. Give me a second. Ooh, okay, I'm better. Uh, so it actually costs way more than normal to actually fund these units. So if we go to barracks right now, you're going to see that we are now using... Oh, does it actually say... Oh, there you go. Good input. Mobilized battalions plus 60% cost. Pretty expensive. Ooh, there's been an election. Let's just double... Oh, no. I guess the parties have changed around because currently we have literally zero, <laughs> literally zero legitimacy, which is pretty bad. Um, let's get rid of the landowners. Plus, that's pretty sucky. What are we doing at the moment? We're currently doing a law which requires the boffins. So, okay. We are going to take out the Catholic Church and we're also going to take out the landowners. Problem solved. This will potentially make them angry with us, which will probably make me get less education access, but whatever. It's fine. Done. I want to keep in the armed forces because they're currently giving us plus 15% offense and defense, which is pretty handy if we're going to be in a war. Okay. Oh, before this starts as well, I actually have the opportunity... Oh, they've got allies. Two other nations have joined their little thing here. I'm going to be cheaty. <laughs> If I continually add war goals, I will increase the amount of uh, infamy I get, which will make countries around me hate me. I'm going to wait until this phase is nearly over, and I'm going to add two new war goals on the nations that have joined against me. Because if I win the war right now, everyone I'm at war with will unfortunately have, a, I think, a five-year truce. Maybe it's relative to the scale of the war. So I will have to wait for ages to take over Nicaragua and Guatemala. I can't say these names. I'm sorry. I'm stupid. Uh, let's see. So, in a second. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Now, pause. I'm going to add some war goals. I basically just want to avoid England from killing me. That's my main thing here. England, I would like to conquer these additional territories. Thank you very much. <gasps> I can't do it! No! It costs too much uh, war goal maneuvering. I can't add infinite war goals. I have a limit. So I got 22 left. What should we get? Should I get war operations from Mexico? <laughs> Why not? They gave me 10% of their tax income for five years. It will help fund my economy. It's totally fine. Okay, done. And have we done it? Are we safe? Oh, it's pause of four days. Oh, I can't. Oh, okay, fair enough. Me waiting to the end didn't really change anything. Done! The war has been locked in. Now is the time for countdown to war. So on this front, I'm pretty much good to go. I have 15,000 men versus 6,000. And the quality of my army is higher than theirs. Not by much, but it's higher. On the other side, we have America versus Mexico. And it looks like the American army is weaker than the Mexican army. That's actually quite interesting. They've only got 5,000 men. I don't know how that's happening. Plantation economy, promote liberal reforms, and maintain balance of power. So they have not invested much in military. Oh, but they have the possibility to conscript 358,000 conscripts. What about Mexico? Yeah. I feel like we've won this one, everybody. <laughs> anyway, let the war begin. Oh, I so if that was like one second later, it would have matched up with the music there. Okay, so we kind of seen this in a way. Uh, wars work in various ways where you assign troops to a front. Um, you can do advance front to advance the front, or you can do defense, which reduce the speed at which they advance the front. Uh, apart from that, though, each of these skills would give you plus 20% attrition, so I'm just losing troops from just being out in the field at this point. And when these bars fill up, a battle will begin in some place in the region. So you can see right here, we have 3,000 of our glorious army versus 2,000 of the enemy. I can just say this guy is swaggering right now. Look at look at this drip. <laughs> it's a pretty bad, good looking guy there. Okay, so as you go through, you kind of see that stuff's happening. We are winning this war. You can see the balance of power here, and you can see there are losses and wounded happening. If we go to the detail screen, you can see a general breakdown of all the different modifiers and stuff in the game. Uh, I will say, every time you lose units, they flat out die, of course, or if they're wounded, they may return home and just recover. 
or they might become the penance, which are people that are kind of taking up room in your nation, but aren't really contributing anything, like uh, war, war veterans that have been hurt and had to return home, that kind of thing. So if you go, if you fight for too often, you may get to the situation where you flat out just have no one that can work anymore. What is happening? Game, calm down. Calm down, game. <laughs> so you've actually just got cultural exclusion, which is what we were trying to get last episode. Um, this will radicalize the Catholic Church. Oh no. But, unlike before, the Catholic Church only has 6.7% of the population. I don't think that's powerful enough to actually cause a problem. But also, now that we have that, we actually now have additional... Oh, only one of them. Only Afro-Caribbean are now actually accepted in our region as not being discriminated against. Really, we need to get ourselves, if we can, up to the pot, uh, the maximum rule, which is multiculturalism. But we need to invent a law or get some technology to actually understand what that means. Uh, before we carry on the bat battles, well, give me a second, everybody. Sorry about this. Um, as we already have annoyed the church, I'm going to go for total separ separation. I was also going to radicalize the trade unions. That's fine. We'll go for it. No fear. Done. Okay, perfect. So we are. So I got to say about this war system, I, I kind of like it because it removes micromanagement from the other games, which I, I do approve of personally. It's just my own play style. But it is a bit clunky. I'm not going to lie. So overall, it works pretty well. There are situations where it's a bit frustrating. For instance, in this situation, you see that we got a yeah, 15 fat game. What are you doing, man? Oh, we haven't got enough paper. We'll deal with that in a minute. It's fine. Ooh, it's fine. So you see that we have 7,000 versus 15,000, but this battle only has 8,000 and 3,000 involved. I have had situations where I have had 120,000 units versus 15,000, but all the battles only had like 10 versus 15, so I kept losing, despite me having literally 10 times the number of enemies, uh, units in the battlefield. It was crazy. Uh, on top of that as well, if you have allies in the same front and they're weaker than you, they may take the battle so that they just lose a battle. Because if, for instance, if we were fighting right now and I was better, I could lose this battle, so we got to attack again elsewhere. But basically, if you have allies that suck, you can get stuck in a situation where you just don't make any progress ever <laughs> until your allies die off, which may take literally hundreds of years. I don't know, but there are some um, annoyances, I will say, but hopefully they can work on that after the game's release. Oh, there's some Mexicans here. Interesting. How's the war going on over here, by the way? There's still only 5,000. Oh, like those poor Americans. I feel bad because like you get pushed into a war and you're like, you know you can hire like 200,000 units and you get 5,000 guys. <laughs> Apart from that though, we've already taken out Costa Rica and now we're going to move on to, uh, what's this, Nicaragua? Something like that, who knows. Also, while we're doing this as well, we've got low market access in the various regions. And also, I think for the most part we're going to leave this as it is because I already set up a bunch of orders before last episode. <gasps> We have stopped importing dyes. Let me give me a second, everybody. Give me a second. And uh, what we're going to do with that, we're going to put down a dye plantation here. And we'll go from there. Done. Okay. Oh, wow. This time I'm really lucky. I see I've got nearly my entire army in this battle now. We're absolutely devastating them. So it does kind of mean with the system, though, which is a lot less micromanagement, it does kind of mean that. The wars are not decided at the onset, but it does mean based on your economic situation and how well equipped your men are, or how populous your, um, like how many buffs you get from various things, you can have a massive advantage over your enemy. Like right now, I am absolutely devastating them. They don't really have much chance against us. Uh, ooh, done. War goal has been enforced. We have captured Costa Rica. Unlike the other games they've made, um, wars are kind of separated out a little bit. So, because I have multiple war goals against different nations, I can piece out each one individually if I've defeated them. So, for instance, if there was a situation where America would just completely devastate and wipe out Mexico, all the war goals against Mexico would be applied, and then they, America would come and join me in the rest of the war. So, what we're probably going to find in a second is, once, look at these little battle lines here. Once we probably find in a second, once I defeat the remaining nation here, we're probably going to move over and help attack uh, the Mexicans with our own forces. Done. So what I can do now, if we just find our general, has he already done it? Where is our general? 
Oh, he's returned home. We're going to deploy him over here. He's going to move over with the use of transports. Oh, everybody! He's got... He leveled up. He got a new skill. Offensive planner. This skill goes up, I think, three times. Uh, and as you can see, it gives him more offense for all the units he uses. And it gives him a... Oh, it's leveled up right there. <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> Maybe that's a little bit fast. Because he's only been in battle for like a week. And he's already the expert offensive planner after like a few days of combat. But that's fine. So in 40 days, he's going to appear over here. And then he'll be joining the Americans in fighting the war. Okay, so before we do anything else, let's have a look here as well. We have our new region. I'm going to start incorporating it right away. It's going to take five years. But that means we're going to have a little bit of a problem with bureaucracy here. Uh, apart from that, though... Oh! Oh! Ooh. We already have dye plantations. So what we got here? We got sawmills. Let's do more hardware production as well. Bananas. Uh, the problem, the thing I've got to say, every time you take over a region, you have to go through and change all the production methods to what you would normally use if you're your own country. It could be a little bit annoying sometimes, but overall it's not that much of a deal. And done. One thing I might change later was this. We haven't done it yet at all, but if we have a loads of tools, we can increase the livestock factories to produce more meat. Which is a basic and also a luxury food good at the same time. In fact, that may be a very good call to do very soon. But I think we currently have an issue with tools. Oh, we don't. Ooh. Ooh. I'm going to try that. Damn. That should make them a lot more profit and also increase the food production of my nation. Okay, how are we doing with the war over here? I'm going to arrive in 20 days. Done. We have another location as well. Look at it. It looks so beautiful. Incorporate as well. Uh, logging camp. Same thing as before. We've got to go through the same thing again. You can definitely tell that I haven't conquered anything in my normal games because I do this very quickly. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, it's okay. We'll just go through it all. It's not a problem. I kind of wish there was a like a default somewhere you can put down which automatically applies your nation's like default. You just say if I capture one of these locations, it automatically turns it into a this configuration. That'd be pretty handy for quality of life in my opinion. Done. Okay. Now, we, of course, we have issues with turmoil here and also with uh, devastation, which is this wear and tear from combat. And we're also losing a lot of money because we have to, we've lost a lot of our bureaucracy uh, points. Now, what I'm going to do... Ah, they've also got issues with infrastructure. Let's quickly think about this for a second. Also, we're on speed 2. I'm not sure I did that. Now, we actually did, last episode, queue up an additional motor industry, so we can afford another four railways. So, I'm actually going to build one each in these locations, which should put us up to plus AC in total, so it would be nice and equal. Um, in the interim, though, we just have to make do. We have to make do with the Columbia market issue. This may take a while to push through, unfortunately. Now, the additional locations and pops is probably going to decrease the amount of stability we have in our market. I feel like for an immediate situation we probably want to deal with is we're probably going to... Oh! We have a lot to better version of fighting. Nice. It will require more paper, though. In fact, what we probably should do, put that down in simple organization and put this one up to standardize. No, we need more. We need more. So I'm trying to get it so it's actually equal. There you go. I imagine I've just messed this up there, haven't I? We haven't got enough paper. Yes. Um, paper mill. We can actually increase this using sulfur to make more paper, which we will do immediately. And then for the interim, I'm going to import a little bit of sulfur from another country. Done. Have we arrived in a... Oh, we have arrived. Let's have, see how this works out. So, despite the size of the Mexican army and its allies, ours is actually a higher quality than theirs. So, we'll probably see a battle in a second. I'm actually winning despite having less troops because our offensive capabilities are just better than theirs. That is mostly due to the power of Francesco. He's a pretty good guy. D did I lose my buff for... Oh, I see. Done. I also, I lost my plus 15% defensive bonus, so we got that back a second ago. 
We're making good progress there. Perfect. So this war's probably going to go on for a long time, by the way. I'm not going to lie to you guys. <laughs> um, because of the size of the nations, unless America steps up and brings in some more allies, it's going to be a bit of a long one. Um, but... Oh, America's fighting right there. They have some pretty good high-quality units as well. Interesting. Though, unfortunately, in their situation here, they haven't brought enough of them into the battle to actually be able to beat the Mexicans here, so... Anyway, apart from all that... Ooh. That's really good. I think we're going to switch over to that. Oh, no, we're not. It costs engines and hardwood. We'll probably leave that for now. Anti-anti-clericalism. Okay. Let's go for it. Some of the clergymen get a bit annoyed, but apart from that, it's okay. And that was really low. <laughs> I probably haven't got many clergymen in my country, I, I would gather them. So, of course, the problem we're having right now, though, is we're starting to lose a lot of money, which is not exactly very good. Um, what are we doing over here? I was trying to get migrants to live here, wasn't I? To try and fix this. But for now, we're going to cancel that. And we're going to use the excess authority to get... Oh, we can't. Damn it. Okay, plan B, plan B. We're going to... Oh, that's actually making loads of money. I was going to switch out tobacco with luxury furniture but it seems that we make more money with tobacco enabled we pretty much just need to then to furniture we can make more money with clothing instead only a little bit though we just have to soldier on everybody we have to soldier through this bring them down okay so we also got a lot of problems with railways and stuff as well oh so does that mean Actually, I've, I'm making a mistake here, aren't I? If I increase arms industries, it will reduce the cost of the military goods for our faction. So, good idea. We're also going to improve the amount of government administrations over here. And at some point, we also need to find a sulfur mine. I don't think we actually have any, actually. I don't think we've got any sulfur. So, I want to stop importing it so we can just make it instead. If I look at this location here... It doesn't seem like we have any capacity. So I've actually just got a map mode right now. So you can see where in the world you can make sulfur mines. So in our situation, we have absolutely zero um, locations to build sulfur mines. So we're just stuck, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, Venezuela might be able to help us if we invade them later on. But when I say help, I mean we invade them. Oh, no. We're actually losing kind of because of the size of their military. Well, there's two battles at the same time. That's cool. Ah, I wonder if when I was playing by myself, I wonder if because I was doing like a little choke point war. Actually, I was playing what I was doing. I was playing as these guys, the Secret Empire, and we were fighting, I think, into here. So I think because maybe the link for the front line, there was so little time to do like the location to do battles. It was only one at a time, which was causing a problem. If there's multiple battles at the same time, that's okay for me. I think... Eventually we should win, because I think my army is so high quality compared to the Mexican army at this point, we're just going to bleed them out. Oh, see, they are getting pretty powerful. Oh, they've got an expert defensive strategist. Interesting. Well, that's unfortunate. Anyway, moving on. So, what's, what else are we doing then? So we're currently trying to get so total separatism. And I think we have, ah, 41 weeks away. Fair enough. I need to find a way of generating more money. So we may just temporarily increase, decrease the wages here. And also increase general taxes. Just so we're not going into debt. You can already see, I've already got 313,000 credit, which is already generating 1,000 pound interest per week, which is not good. So we just try and offset that so we don't get any worse. Because if you get too much debt, you really are screwed, to be honest. Um, there is a chance that a major power may buy out your debt for a, an obligation, but then they might force you into like an alliance or a vassal ship or something. So I do not want to do that if we can avoid it. Okay, so in a second, this is going to be finished and it should help, hopefully help with the price of weapons. Expand to level two. So hopefully in a second, we'll see our income go up a little bit as we have to spend less on weapons. 
Ah, I wonder if that's what America's problem is. Maybe they haven't got a large military because they haven't got the capacity for... Maybe they can't afford it, or maybe they haven't got enough, like, arm production. I don't know where their thing is, to be honest. <laughs> I was trying to find where their military base is so we can have a look at their stocks. Uh, if I go to market, and I click on America, military goods. So they currently have, well, balance. They are spending exactly what they should be. How are they spending 120 arms? Trade routes, they're selling them. America, what are you <laughs> Damn it, America. <laughs> well, that's their fault. If they have more arms, they may consider um, levying more fighters. And that, I think, I really want to try it at some point. Especially if we're playing multiplayer or something. I'm pretty sure if I have too much arms on arms, I wonder if I give them to America, would they then start making more military units? Anyway, so we got a little event here, Crooked Connections. Frustrated with the lengthy legal progress surrounding total separatism, Santiago de Oblidia <laughs> of the Boffins has approached us with an offer to exploit the process. So we can get reduced time in enacting, or we can just have a slightly higher time. I don't want to annoy the church more than we need to, because we don't want to feel discriminated in our country and start a rebellion. Okay, sorted. Uh, what I'm just doing is as well plus two. We can actually reduce the cost of this now because we have enough loyalty without uh, the budget increase to keep the buff for power and military. And also, I'm going to increase these back up as well. A little bit. I'm not happy about this though. Unfortunately, with how this works, because they're not happy that I took them over, and also because they're lacking access to my market. Oh, they're not actually. Oh, they just hate me then. <laughs> they hate me. It's fine. I'm pretty sure it might be due to them being discriminated against. No, they're fine. It's probably just their standard of living then. This war might go on for the entire episode, by the way. Yeah, see, it's like, it's what I was mentioning earlier. It's kind of weird that this one only had 1,000, 2,000 troops in total. I kind of want to see, because I'm actually making more arms than I need, I think. No, we're not. We're kind of... We're, we're perfect right now. We are making the perfect amount of military units. What's all this? Rubber has been discovered. Interesting. Rubber is going to be very important later in the game, but a lot of resources were just flat out not known at this point of time in history. So, like, no one's using oil. No one's using rubber. Um, silk is a very interesting one, because silk is used to make um, advanced clothes. But silk is mostly created by the silkworm, which I think is pretty much absent from the world in general. Uh, the Chinese, of course, knew how to make silk for a very long time, as the creation of the Silk Road to Europe. So they have a capacity to do so. And also the technology was spread to Italy. So there are places in Italy that actually also have silk plantations as well. But for the most part, you just can't make silk until you get really far in a tech tree. I think it's... Art Silk, which is going to take 26 years of research right now, to actually be able to synthesize... Um, what's it called? Oh, I've forgotten what it's called, everybody. Silk. <laughs> I was just talking about it, and I just forgot what it was. Yeah, so this is why it's okay as well. Because we've got a nice stable economy, and we're making money during wartime. Uh, well, I say nice and say, well, I have to increase taxes. I can leave this war going on for ages, and eventually they give up. Because right now, we can't end the war anyway, because America still wants to fight, because they really want to try and get the open Mexican market. And if I try and push this through, then Mexico would not want to end the war. So we have to just wait until either side decides to give up, and we can go from there. Okay. Perfect. Uh, if things go pretty well for us, we'll probably try and expand out the amount of units we have, so we can send some reinforcements. But right now, we're kind of a bit dodgy with the income. So we'll leave that be. Okay, so how are we doing with other things? We've actually just finished building the additional motor industry, which currently is turned off because there's no point in hiring more workers. Uh, but after that, we're going to start fixing the market access in our four regions that are outlined right now. So our two new ones and our two Amazonian ones as well. Oh, these guys aren't happy either. It's probably because of this, to be fair. We'll fix it. It's fine. Unfortunately, it does take a long time to actually build railways. I think they're probably one of the most expensive buildings you can make in the game. I think, actually, I say that, I don't think they are the highest. I think, from what I've played, 
Power plants, I think, were the highest cost. Though I would imagine as well, war machine industries would also be very high as well, because they're like very late game buildings and technologies. Cool. Oh, did we build the food industry? I didn't even see it. Nice, we have a food industry. And we just improved it as well. <laughs> it's perfect. Uh, while we're doing nothing now, let's just increase mechanized workshops. Um, do I want to do this? Yes, it'd be very... No. Choices, everybody. Choices. Choices are hard. Let's go for this. The tiers of technology uh, increase the amount of innovation required. So this compared to this, this is 6,000 innovation required. This is 12,000. It goes to 12... That's also 12. Oh, they're the same tier, sorry. Let tier 3. Tier 4. 20, 60,000. <laughs> it does scale up quite quickly, so you've got to keep an eye on that. Anyway, so food industry. So it's already been generating us money anyway, because it's already been making a profit. And we've actually now supplying our population with liquor and groceries, which both are more efficient and good for the population. So I'm going to immediately increase baking powder, which makes us 55 more groceries, which will increase in demand as we go. So let's do that. Also, I'm going to implement patient still, um, patient stills, which will increase the amount of groceries. Uh, sorry, liquor, but reducing. Oh, we can't. We haven't got any glass. Damn it, everybody. <laughs> this will be in the future. We'll do that at some point. I've also just unlocked canneries, which use a little bit of iron, uh, reducing the amount of grain and increasing the amount of fish required with more groceries. So we do that as well. Done. What is this? I think we've seen this event last episode, so I'm not going to read it out every time, but we will just do the correct option, which is to increase enactment chance by 15%. Done. Okay, uh, in terms of other things, let's increase this back up again. Oh, it's a big drop down. We need an extra 5k taxes to get rid of the um, deficit that time. It's fine, though. Oh, no mix left. So I think, by the way, there's a weird aura a red aura around these villages because of the turmoil. I think it's a graphic indicator of something bad is happening in your location. So when we get rid of the um, the radicals, it should go back down to normal. Oh, that's why we have radicals. I probably it's probably because I increased taxes. Oh no, it's been it's been static. Fair enough. Okay, so after we build all these things up anyway, I do want to start increasing production of oh actually we've got to do some other stuff haven't we sorry i forgot because we've increased the amount of stuff we have we need to make sure the market is stable with basic construction materials so if we go back to this we currently have a massive issue with paper and grain so we want to deal with those two things first in my opinion and then after that we can go for things that are more useful uh, such as goods such as clothing and furniture oh the, the, ah the front's been split, but it's just rejoined. Something else I'll say as well with this system is that, for instance, every time you win a battle, you will move forward X provinces. So a province is tiny. The province is this big compared to the entire front line. It's massive. If you get a weird situation, which I've had a few times where I say, I don't know, I take over like this all of a sudden. I somehow just go in a giant line. It will make an extra front either side. If you get a situation where you take a bunch of random provinces in a small area, it may create like five or six fronts in one go, and it'd be really confusing. <laughs> uh, but it's so for the most part, it's okay on large scale combat. But if it's a region that's very mountainous, it can be a bit crazy sometimes. What's this? The wine producing Corsia has been lauded by what is this? Sommeliers as outstanding. So this will either let us get more prestige for five years or more wine production. Let's have a quick look, shall we? So currently. We are making way too much wine. So I think we'll go for the prestige. If I was in a situation where it would be the reverse, I would increase production. Oh, is it done? Ah, the railways. I, I, I'm really curious, by the way, if the other factions make a railway, I wonder if it connects up all the railway lines. I, I assume it would, but... Also, how's it going to work with this place? There's like no graphic at all. Uh, by the way, I think the reason that is, is because this is a split territory. This is actually the Amazonian region, which is actually all of that. It's huge. As you can see, it's way bigger than it actually is what I own. Anyway, actually, if I look inside, you can see that there's actually a village there. 
Anyway, apart from all that. So I want to see this go down, but I don't think this will decline now until we get rid of the taxation as well, unfortunately. And also because food prices are higher than they were before, people are probably struggling to buy food, which is, of course, causing issues on top of everything else as well. Um, done. Okay, cool. I think this war's going to end soon because we're starting to give up. As soon as America loses war support, I should be able to do white peace because I don't think we're powerful enough to actually defeat Mexico. And Mexico is not powerful enough to defeat America and myself combined. So, oh, America has gotten themselves a little bit more of a, a little bit more units, which is pretty cool. But this war is cursed. <laughs> this war will not end. This is going to carry on. Okay, how's everything going? 29 months left until we integrate these two states, which is pretty fast. Also, I know the tour mile is still very, very high, but it has gone down a little bit. So we are making the people's lives here better, so they're less angry at us for taking them over. Because after all, even if people hate you, and you do not discriminate against them, and you make their lives better, they will be happy. Like, like oh, we used to be our own country, but now I get to have, I don't know, velvet silk clothes. They'd be happy. They'd be good. Make everyone's life happier. Okay. This place is still very far off from actually doing anything, though. <laughs> it's also because the infrastructure rating is very low as well, because it, because we own such a small amount of the location of the Amazon rainforest, it's actually smaller as well. And also, it's got the addition of being unincorporated and being the Amazon rainforest. Ooh! Excellent. So we've now just done a law which bans religious involvement in production buildings so on a face level this would mean a bunch of laws would have changed internally in my little thing here so for instance this one here was originally a minister of clergy which had 500 clergymen working in the building that has now been replaced by secular administration which has more bureaucrats so as i explained in the other episode these have different tendencies for interest groups so clergymen normally go for catholic church or rural folk where bureaucrats tend to go for the boffins or the petty bourgeois so it's a different way of changing your faction's makeup. People are importing my artillery. Can you not? <laughs> I need that for my army, guys. Please leave them alone. With how the economy works, by the way, if we just go and build a bunch of military buildings with like a resource that's not very prevalent in the world, we'd probably export it to other people making money anyway. So it's pretty cool. Anyway, we have now built a additional location here. That should increase people's um, jobs and also just make them happier. What was this? Wait a second. Why is this defaulted to... Uh, oh, I picked the wrong one, everybody. I'm an idiot. Oh, wait, one second, one second. Because I put down loads of railways before I changed them over, they should all be on wooden passenger carriages. Done. So that means we will generate a lot of transport now. There you go. Nice. We've unlocked sewing machines, mechanical looms, and mechanical workshops. A bunch of uh, upgrades for the basic goods for um, what we need in our country. Oh, war's over. Wait, are they still at war? Oh, that's pretty cool. I didn't think that was a thing. Well, it looks like they're still fighting their war because they got war goals on each other, and I just left. So, war has been sold, everybody. Unfortunately, my economy hasn't really recovered too much because I stabilized the cost of... Um, thank you for that, guys. I like it as an election, but nearly all the parties are already in the government. <laughs> I don't know. I think it just means how legitimate they seem after the election. But I'm leaving it be. Anyway, so what we're going to do next is we're going to go for society, which is a little bit different, and we're going to go for... Oh, it's really far away. We shouldn't do this. I wanted to go for the more efficient version of building, but it's going to take 12 years, which is a bit too long for me, in my opinion. Uh, instead, we'll go for pharmaceuticals, which would allow us to get uh, healthcare. It's going to take 31 months. I've missed what that said, by the way. So, oh, we passed the law, I think. Oh, that was a while ago, actually. Never mind. <laughs> oh, we can institute schools. How cool is this? So there's... I don't know how... I haven't played enough to know what the one is best. Maybe they're both good in different ways. 
So current, let's pause while I'm doing this. You can currently pick public schools, or actually, let's go for all of them. No schools, nothing happens. Simple, right? Religious schools, they will increase education access and increase conversion rates of your population. But the downside, well, or maybe the boon, if you're a religious society, is it will increase the percentage of political strength of the Catholic Church or whatever um, religious institution you have in your country. Now, the other one is wealth access, which increases the boffin's political strength, but also it means plus 0.5 wealth education access. So basically, the more wealthy somebody is, the higher ratio of education they can achieve. So I personally think, this may be wrong, <laughs> in the game sense, if I try and make a society that is extremely rich, this would be better than public schools, which is a flat out increase in education access. That's my thesis behind that. But of course, I might be wrong there. Now, the public schools doesn't actually affect any faction and increases assimilation rate. So it is also got its own merits. But I just think for the education status i want to go for this and also it increases the boffins political strength making them easier to pass laws in their favor done as you can see this is going to be very easy to pass 62 percent uh chance well 60 percent for us at the moment easy now we are unfortunately lacking a bunch of authority because i think one of the things i just got rid of which was total separation actually included losing authority we lost 200 authority here but we have also at the same time made the Catholic Church in this situation weaker. Now, I'm going to be getting rid of some taxation to counter this. That's okay. The more of this you have, the stronger your opposition's interest groups are. So I want to keep that as low as possible for now. Anyway, so unfortunately without that though, we're now losing £2,000 a week, which is not great. And there's also revolution brewing. But... As the church and the petty bourgeois are so weak, they actually have not got the power to take me out. They're only going to get up to plus 69% approval. If it gets to 100%, it'll be a revolution. But if we can reduce their power or make them happy, they will stop and it'll be fine. So basically, when I play because of this situation, I will literally sit for literally years with a near revolution. I'll just ignore it. <laughs> but let's see what happens. Anyway. So while I've been talking anyway, we've actually nearly finished our build queue. So we've actually got railways all the way up now, I think, to probably here. Yep, it goes all the way through the country. What is this? <laughs> oh, that, wait, there is a connection. I was going to say. It's fine. We'll take a 90 degree angle turn on the railway there. It's not a problem. How are they doing with taxation by the way 18 months until they fix out you can kind of see by the way as time goes on it does actually do like a rolling increase in how the state is achieved oh the war's over they white pieced out clearly so now you can see that we are getting a little bit of land taxation per capita tax income tax assumption rate from these seats which is pretty handy done okay um we need more resources we are running out of money everybody So, I feel like we may do this now, because the war's over anyway. I should have done it earlier, to be honest. I want to get back to a point where we're making money and not losing it. Ah, but also... Ah, subsidies. Negative 6,000. It's probably because we have too much transport network. And it's not making a profit anymore. And there's also not enough engines. Oh, wait. Really? Someone must be buying my engines, everybody. Ah! Damn it. America, why would you do this to me? I'm being sabotaged by America, everybody. Damn it, guys. Well, while we're fueling the American uh, railway network, <laughs> it does also mean that I have just not got enough uh, railways, which kind of sucks. So we probably also want to invest in getting ourselves a few things, actually. First off, more coal mines, because we need more coal. We also then want to invest in more steel mills, motor industries, and also probably an additional workshop for tools. Now, after that, we're going to focus on probably building up the basic textile mills and furniture to give our guys a lot more wealth as we go along. Oh, it's going to 72%. It's fine. It's fine. This money is actually a bit of a problem right now. That is not good. I don't want to go up to maximum rates. 
Hmm, everybody, hmm. So as you can kind of see, there's a bit of a trade-off. When you become more democratic, you get less authority, which means you can spend less on consumption taxes. Yes. Which, as you can see, is causing a bit of an issue because I can't get as much money from just doing nothing. So there is a big bonus to being a more authoritarian country, which is you can get more money easily from trading and stuff. Oh, it's my logging camps. You can kind of see they're spread out and stuff. That's pretty cool. I don't think we're going to meet the second jetter, everybody. My second jetter was to increase the amount of construction speed we have. But with our deficit right now, it's not looking too good for us, to be honest. But these four buildings are directly going to go into improving our odds, at least. And what we'll do as well... Let's have a quick... Ooh! We can go for this. What is the problem with this? I think that's a good investment. It says that I'm going to lose a lot of money there, but I don't think that's necessarily correct. Regardless, we'll do it anyway. Clothing industry, sewing machines, done. I'm also going to start making clutch tree crows. This may seem a bit crazy because we currently have a situation where we just flat out do not have an oh, alliance. No, thank you. Let's import some silk from England. Oh, yeah, England. England's more relevant in this region, so we'll go for England. So the reason I'm doing this is that we start making luxury goods. I do not want to just spam loads of industries in my home sector. So I said a few episodes ago, we're going to have one place be furniture. Ooh. Nice. And one place be tools. Not tools, furniture. So I set these two up. Uh, wait, did I just do the same thing twice? Yes, I did, everybody. Yes, I did. Done. And that would be our next push. Ah, perfect. We're making loads of money now. I'll tell you why this is. It's because our investment pools are back into actually supplying me money. So how that works in investment pools is, is it's to do with this one right here. Oh, actually, that should have... That's a bit weird. There must have been a good reason for this, but I just don't know what it is. So investment pools we discussed the other day is successful businesses put money back into the economy to build more businesses. It's pretty awesome. Though it seems that for some reason while we were building the last building, it was not getting any funding from the investment pool. But now we are. So it's actually paying off the cost of making this completely. We've, see here, we're actually completely negated the cost of constructing this building. So we're actually making a profit right now, which is perfect. And that also means I should probably do this again. Ooh. Let's do this one first. What's this? An article. Uh, I will lose authority. Which is not great, but it is what it is. Oh no. They are a protectorate of England. So if we try and attack this kingdom, I will just be blown up. What about this place? They have no allies. Interesting. We've also this increased amount of bureaucracy we just have. Interesting. There must have been some kind of deep uh, negative modifier I had. Or maybe some other reason, which I can't think of right now. Regardless though, we're very close to actually getting incorporated states here. Which is great news for us. We are back on losing money again though. Oh, I guess the investment pool only had a set amount of money. It does actually have a build up. So if it ran out of money, it was stopping being able to pay for us. Yeah, it only makes £4,000, which is a bit annoying. Um, let's put that back up again. Fine game. <laughs> Fine. Whatever. I guess I won't do what I want then. So as we actually have... Oh, I'm importing dyes still, aren't I? That's not a good idea. What am I importing still? I'm exporting coffee. We are... Importing clothes, quite a lot of clothes, and we're exporting sugar. Fair enough. Is there anything else we might be able to make a profit from? No, not at all. That also explains why this is so balanced because it's actually conforming to the trade route there. I guess what we could do is go for patient stills and then we import some glass. 
Actually, that could be a good idea. Because services is another general good which people all need. You can see here they need it for... Oh, wait. Game, give me a second, give me a second. Oh, oh damn it, game. <laughs> you cannot import services, but services are required for services, free movement, communication, and art. So they have a lot of uses, and currently they're plus 75% cost. I would normally do this, which is market squares, which uses glass to give you more services. So we're going to do this temporarily, and we're going to import glass from America. And we need more than that, don't we? Probably England for now. Let's go. I'll go for that. Okay. And the other thing we needed that for as well was the stills. Done. Perfect. So this should hopefully improve the quality here. You can see we got we're selling way more services than before. And also, it should have also increased my service tax a little bit as well, making me more money. So it kind of works out. How are we doing with this? Done. I actually forgot about this, everybody. So we got, we're resetting this to level 5 because it got reduced by an event. And we're also changing this to level 2, which gives you plus 1% welfare education access per level instead of plus 0.5. So if we can actually look at that for a second. Let's have a quick gander, shall we? It's around here somewhere. Uh, detailed list. Laborers, for instance. Detail view. And where is education? They have 94% literacy. Interesting. So you can see right here, they are getting plus 0.5 from wealth from private schools. Interesting. So I wonder if they get to a high... Let's look, let's look for a guy that's richer. And we'll see if the education access is different. Because this might explain my previous idea of how it works. Um, engineers. They're rich. Let's go look at these guys, shall we? So their education access... Is 67% already way higher. Oh, wait. I'm an idiot. Sorry. Plus 2.5% for each level of wealth. Sorry, I'm stupid. <laughs> I didn't even read the top bit there. So that does work that way. Interesting. So I do think that this is a better version if you have a very well-off society. If you're poor, not so much. Anyway, so as that's going on, uh, let's go into... Do a law, shall we? There are a lot of things we could potentially do, but I don't think there's actually anything that really screams out to me that we should implement it. One thing we might want to get for the future, just so it's out of the way, is colonial affairs. So we're going to try... It's going to radicalize the rural folk. Um... Yes, we can do that. It's fine. So we're not going to colonize right now, but it means in the future we can try and grab colonies in Africa or somewhere else at some point. Oh, okay, we're actually building these big buildings now, which is pretty nice. It means we've also got additional coal as well, right? Yes. So I was going to say, well, with services, there's also an option to use coal as well to increase services by a lot. Though I personally think this is not a good idea because you need coal for pretty much everything in the end of the game. So I would personally stick with market squares. Uh, by the way, how this works is based on the urbanization of a region, depends on how many urban centers you have. So our net focus, here, uh, our thing is that we have 412 urbanization from various buildings, which gives us four urban centers. So if I were to say, go and build myself a chemical plant, oh, it doesn't actually say on here, does it? No. Trade agreement with Brazil, yes. Anyway, so where is it? At the bottom here, you can see that each factory gives you 20 urbanization. So it's pretty cool. Anyway. An alliance with Brazil. Interesting. There is no reason that we cannot be allies with them. And as time goes on, we will then betray them and kill them. So alliances only apply in regions that you both have uh, control in. So I'm pretty sure the alliance will not help me in this location because... Oh, they... Do they have an interest? Brazil, buddy! Interaction. I don't know where to check where the interests are, by the way. So excuse me for being stupid. I, it must be somewhere. I could go to... What is it? This menu? 
Nope, not that menu. I saw it. Uh, I was playing the game earlier and I found a menu which showed me what... There. There it is. I gotta find what I'm looking for. Central America. Nope. Game. Damn it, game. Let's do it by... They don't have an interest here. They just help me because they're my ally. Oh, cool. I was wrong then. I thought it only applied in locations where there was um, interest. So if I now declare war on on this place, <laughs> they're actually going to help me. How cool is that? England may be a problem though. Um, let's just not do anything else in this episode in terms of war. And we're just going to make sure we've got maximum relations there. At least until we fix my deficit, because it is a bit of a problem right now. We've also got a big problem right now with authority, which is not much we can do about it, really. Okay. I kind of... We can't, can we? We're, we're too poor right now. Let's at least try and increase this so people pay more for goods. And we'll go from there. I think we did pretty well. We expanded our nation level a little bit. We have two new states in our be beautiful locations. Are they actually fixed now? No, they're still quite unhappy, unfortunately. That's probably because of the high taxes. But it is what it is. Austria has now got an interest in Grand Columbia. Interesting. Revolution brewing. It's a bad revolution, though. It's fine. We can ignore that one. Do you know what? I think we can probably attack more of this location. But... That'll be the next episode. We haven't got the time for that now. Country subjugated. Parma. Interesting. Gold discovered. Gold is amazing, by the way. Uh, can we find a gold mine somewhere? What has happened here? Okay, that's an interesting country. <laughs> what have you done? Gold. Flout gives you money, by the way. You can see it right here. This is flout generating 1,000 income for this country. If you have a gold mine. Gold mine is amazing. Although, unfortunately, as you can see right here, I have no gold mines because um, there's no gold here. <laughs> simple reasons, everybody. Simple reasons. Apart from that, I think we're going to wrap up today's episode. I'll do what we did last episode. Let's have a quick look around the world, shall we? So in our own region, we can see that there is a disgusting amount of border gore with Chile in take taking over the southern parts of the um, continent there. We also have, in the north, a still a war ongoing between... Um... Mexico and uh, England, England? <laughs> America. <laughs> this is actually a different war though, because America has declared it itself and they're actually trying to take over various territories, which is quite interesting. Uh, what else we got? Oh, Canada has become one large nation now, but they are still under control of England. Uh, in Oh, there is currently a giant revolt in England, which are, who, what kind of guys are these? Republic. There's a Republic rebellion in Great Britain trying to take it down. And it also seems there are some minor wars in Germany as well. Italy seems to be the same, but apart from that, Russia is still just colonizing Africa, which is pretty crazy. <laughs> as you can see, though, it's pretty chaotic with colonization because there's a bunch of countries all over the place at the moment. Uh, there seems to be some kind of rebellion as well over in India, which is one of the places owned by the East Indian Trading Company. And there's also a revolt in China. Apart from that, it seems, seems pretty static to me. Oh, also, it looks like Australia has nearly become one nation as well. So things are changing, as well as what we've done ourselves. And hopefully we can survive the world as we carry on playing the game. Apart from that, everybody, thank you for watching. As always, please like, subscribe, and comment below. And I'll see you next time. Bye.